Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 and FY20 conference call of Monte Carlo Fashions Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the opening remarks conclude. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Purvangi Jain from Valorum Advisors. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Warm welcome to you all. My name is Purvangi Jain from Valorum Advisors. We represent the Investor Relations of Monte Carlo Fashions Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the fourth quarter in financial year 2024. Before we begin, a quick cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's con call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risk and uncertainties, which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to the management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings conference call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Now let me introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for their opening remarks. We have with us Mr. Sandeep Chen, Executive Director, Mr. R.K. Sharma, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Ankur Gaba, Company Secretary. Without any further delay, I request Mr. Sandeep Jain to start with his opening remarks on the financial highlights. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, very good, good morning to everyone, and thank you all for joining us for today's earning call to discuss the quarterly performance for fourth quarter and financial year ending 2024. Let me start by sharing the financial and the operational highlights. For the fourth quarter under review, the company reported revenue of 207 crore representing a decline of 13% year-on-year. We had EBITDA loss for this quarter of uh, 10 crore, while net loss stood at 19 crore for this quarter. Unfortunately, this quarter was one of the worst we have seen in a long, long time. Due to depressed retail sentiments resulting in overall higher returns and also higher discounts being given resulted in the loss for this quarter. For the financial year ending 2024, the company reported revenue of 1062 crore, on a consolidated basis, representing a degrowth of 5% year-on-year. EBITDA for this year stood at 143 crore, which declined by 34% year-on-year, and EBITDA margins were reported at 13.46. Net profit for the year stood at 61 crore. Monte Carlo Fashion continues with its endeavor to build a leading branded apparel company with continued effort to increase its distribution network. The company has added 55 new reviews in 2024, the total number of EBO now has reached 411. Overall, financial 24 has not been a good year as, as per our initial estimates. This is a result of the poor retail sentiments and the purchasing power that you may have witnessed across companies in the similar sectors. Our strategy to diversify our sales have started bearing fruit. Our online sales have picked up. Home test of sale will continue to show good growth rates. Brand Rocket has also performed well and has been widely accepted by the market. Uh, premium brand Luxuria has also started contributing to the overall sales. For the coming year, we are again committed to open 45 to 55, 50 EBOs across India, including West and South. With this, now we open the floor to our question and answer session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sakshi Sharma from ICICI Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah. 
Hello, Ms. Sakshi Sharma. Your line is unmuted. You can ask the question. The line for the current participants seems to have been disconnected. We will take the next question. The next question is from the line of Venkata Subramanian from Organic Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, Sandeep, hi. Thanks for uh, the opportunity. Uh, you know, historically, uh, the action of content Two parameters. As a company, we have had probably the least amount of sales, and we have had, we have said in multiple uh, conversations and con calls that uh, that will uh, that will be a fundamental strength of the company. Now that unfortunately seems to be actually reversing, which is one, and uh, two is the strength of the company in cash conversion, and uh, therefore uh, lower uh, finance costs. Which also seems to be worse because uh, you know our current uh, finance cost is almost about three times that of what. Uh, is there a trend here or is? It a so why is it not audible? It is uh, actually uh, muffling. Can you please repeat the question? Okay. Now uh, basically just two. One, uh, I think we had lot of sales return, which has never been the case, and our strength previously was that our business model. uh basically ensured that we didn't have the kind of sales returns that we currently having that was that's question one is is it is anything changing fundamentally and the second question is regarding our finance cost uh since we have had very good cash conversions in the past all of us have uh, were under the impression that that will continue while our finance costs have ki kind of uh, you know tripled uh, in the last two years or so uh is anything changing fundamentally or do you want to actually uh, assuage us on any other way yeah uh, thank you so uh the first question is basically the higher sales returns so uh, there is only reason is that as from last two years we have been aggressively pushing our brand to large format stores online sales and also we're opening our ebos so the business of mbo sales and fca sales has actually gone down So MBO FA sale is one area where uh, the returns are not there, but otherwise all the areas now, including uh, large format stores and EBOs, what we are opening, so we are having more returns. But this year is definitely something. You know, uh, what happened in this year was because in, uh, if you see that in last two years, before this year, we grew by around 33 percent. From 624, we reached to around 1100 CR. So uh, the trade show was also good, and the booking was also good, and we make more merchandise also to support the growth for the you know going ahead. But what happened was so there was uh, a disturbance in the uh, uh, basically winter season. It started very late, and secondly the merchandise was more, and thirdly when it started so at that time you know the time was very less. So we have to go for higher discounts. So all these three factors basically uh, you know resulted in higher returns. And higher discount and a certain number of beta. So this is the only reason uh, that the sale returns and higher uh, discounts are because of uh, the delayed winter season. And as far as finance cost is concerned, yes, because there was higher inventory in the system as compared to last year, and also the interest rates have gone up as compared to last two years. So that is also actually, uh, you know, uh, the interest costs have gone up because of these two reasons. New showrooms are not open, so it's going to be finance cost. And even also when we are opening new showroom, that also adds to the financial cost. Because of the one one six lease accounting. But Mr. Chairman, can further, uh, further, uh, you know, uh, 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 give you some detail about the finance cost, which has we entered higher than last compared to last year. So uh, whenever the new showrooms are open. The lease account due to the lease accounting as per India, the, all the rental part is kept light and depreciation and uh, uh, finance cost is uh, incurred. So in this year, you can see uh, uh, you, you, uh, there is an uh, increase in finance cost due to the lease in four properties approximately. Now, Sandeep, my question is not regarding what happened in 24, but we just wanted a, a, a larger, actually forward-looking guidance. uh are we now in for a uh, much higher sales return you know structurally uh, based on the change in business model now than we have had let's say in the early 20s early you know uh, early 2020 and 21 etc that's question 
and two uh, with a, what what, uh, what is your broad estimate with respect to finance costs going forward i'm not talking about just what happened in 2024 yeah, i understand i understand so going forward you know the first and foremost focus for the company is as already we have taken a lot of action on the returns and we have allocated stocks also where to sell this stock also in the uh, existing channels and secondly this year we have decided to put more focus on the profitability as profitability has uh, you, you know that that came down from the historic level of 20 fold EBITDA which have, we have been maintaining the last 15 20 years which has come down to around 14 percent this year so our focus of this year is basically to improve our profitability for that we have taken few actions so that i'll just uh, let all the investors know so one of one of the few actions is that we are shutting down some of the stores which are unprofitable and there have been some shopping shops also where we have more discounts and more returns those so that also we have shut down at the same time we have increased the price around seven to eight percent in this financial year to counter the effect of discount which happens in the uh, discount season so with all these i am pretty sure that we'll be you know having uh, much better profitability as what we had in this financial year but we are forecasting a flat revenue guidance as there will be addition of around 40 to 45 store but at the same time some of the unprofitable store and some of the SIS and some of the channels where returns were all may still shutting it down so the revenue will remain flat but definitely there will there will be significant improvement in the profitability going forward and you didn't uh, touch upon the uh, finance cost angle. Uh, what is your outlook for uh, what the cash conversions will be and, you know, uh, the inventory, inventory carrying costs and broadly finance costs? The finance cost will come down uh, in this financial year as we are liquidating some old stock also. So it, one thing I'm pretty sure about that, it should be coming down by 100 to 200 basis points. Okay. Thanks. And all the best. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Kiran Ghatge from Kingstone Capital Management LLP. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, all. So please, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. The only channel wherein sales return is an issue is PBO, FO, FO, wherein 5 to 10% sales return is allowed, and NCS. Even the sales return even the sales through this channel as a percentage did not increase significantly. Why was there an issue of sales return this year particularly? Can you please speak a little louder because your voice was very... Uh, I was not able to hear you. Uh, Kiran sir, uh, can you take the device closer to you and speak louder? Yeah. Yeah. So the only channel wherein sales return is an issue is EBO, yeah. FOFO wherein sales sales return is allowed for 5 to 10 percent and ncs even though sales through this channel as a percent did not increase significantly why was there an issue of sales return this year no uh, there are two kind of reviews one is which is buyer seller review where uh, the correction is allowed five percent but second is company owned reviews and also the company owned franchise operated reviews where the return is around 14 to 15 percent so basically this year because of more merchandise the return came from these channel as well as from large former stores so large former store this year the return has increased tremendously so as we have been placed at many counters in reliance in chauffeur shop and in uh, you know lifestyle also so all together uh, all the channels basically when the winter was delayed the time was less for selling the goods so we have to go for quickly higher discounts so but when the season is ending, we have to place the summer goods also. So we have to take back the goods also. So that's the reason because I, I would admit that there have been uh, some of the misplanning from our and also because we planned more goods as compared to last financial year to grow our sales. But it backfired because of the season, because of, you know, when, when you have higher merchandise at your store, the only thing you think at that point of time is to how to get rid of this inventory. So we went for higher discount and early discounting. And whatever uh, discounting after discounting, you know, still merchandise was there. So to clear the store and to push the summer sales, we have to take back the inventory also. But I think uh, this was one of the few years where I think the planning was little wrong because of higher uh, merchandise being planned. But this year we have taken a corrective action. So some of the some of the merchandise which came back is already being allocated to respective stores. 
for USS to save ourselves. At the same time, some of the production is planned as per the last year's level. So I don't see any increase in revenues going forward in this financial year, and we would be sticking to the same revenues. But one thing I am uh, again I am uh, reiterating that the, the profitability will be significantly higher what we achieved in this financial year. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Koshik Jawar from AKA Investment. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Sir, what would be the revenue guidance going forward? Because I remember you have said that we are targeting 2,000 crores of revenue in coming three to four years. So where do you see that? When when can we achieve that? Yeah, I think it all depends on the economy and the you know discretionary spending also. Definitely, uh, this is what we planned and we were aggressively opening our stores also. But we're seeing uh, this year where uh, there is a lot of inflationary impacts on the consumers the discretionary spending is down and overall uh, as far as consumption is concerned it has not rebounded so uh, as far as this year is concerned definitely very cautious because we have been hit hard by the profitability in last financial year so the company has decided to stick to the uh, maintain the profitability so this year we are uh, forecasting you know a uh, flat revenue guidance and to improve our profitability but definitely the target which you are saying is definitely on our chart and we will again come back in the second quarter once we see that see how the market is improving and we may revise our guidance also just for the information of the investors. Okay, okay. So uh, in quarter three, you did not an anticipate this much sale return because you said that we would be doing much better and much good margins. But I see the numbers are not re reflecting that. Yeah, uh, you know, if you remember in last, last year was in phone call, we always maintain that the yeah, guidance is flat. We never we never said that it will be growing. But because of higher sales returns, actually it, it should degrow my revenue because when you get higher returns, it is minus of your sales. So that is why the revenue has went down 5%. But otherwise, uh, whatever we have stated in our conference call, we achieved our guidance. But uh, at the margin front, I understand yeah, last... Definitely, definitely we admit that, we apologize for that, we failed in margin front. We never expected that we, we have to go for such higher discount and such early discount. And being a very heavy quarter for us, the third quarter contributes almost 55% of the revenues. And we need we need only have a 15 to 20 days or one month of window to you know get rid of the inventory. So we went for aggressive discount, which we never thought in any of the earlier years. So that has resulted in the impacting the margin. Okay. I understand basically this is one of the year where everything has gone other way around. Uh, so in the coming years, uh, when do you see we get back to the previous margins, I mean 20% or so, next year should be possible that because we are cleaning up all, all the non-stores, right? So basically, whichever stores are not generating as much profitability, so we are closing them down. So I think the better profitability, like better margin above than 20 is possible in next year. No, I, I can't, sorry, I can't say that. Uh, but. The one thing I'm very, very sure is that we will definitely improve from here onwards. The margin will have a significant jump, but uh, whether we'll be able to maintain 20% or not, that I, I can only comment by, I think, second quarter uh, conference call. Then I'll be having more clear picture in our, you know, uh, as far as our retail level is concerned. So even though if we have a good jump in profitability this year, we had roughly around 60 odd crores of profit, and last before year we had 130 crores of profit. Still, we are down 50%. So when you say much growth, what should we think about the growth in the profitability? Uh, see, the as of now, as we have just begun this year, so I, I can't have a, you know, a statement uh, which is not prudent on my side to give you a exact profit figure. But I think by the end of second quarter, I'll be able to give you some more information about the profitability front. But one thing which, again, we are saying is that definitely it will be better as compared to the, what we achieved in this financial year. So when you said you are closing down on some of the stores, these are uh, what EBOs or these are 
retail sto uh, uh, NCS stores, what are the stores you are talking about where you see there is no much traffic or it's yeah. causing a... So, yeah. so uh, let, me give you some, let me give you some information on this. So it's a mix of some large format stores where, where our returns were very high and discounting was very high. So some of the large format stores, some of the SEO shopping store business where the MRP tiers were very less and the returns were more high. And there are three to four stores also where uh, we had the same issues because of low footfalls and uh, returns were more. So those actions company have already taken and we are again adding uh, around 40 to 45 stores so that will compensate the loss of sales but if being uh, uh, having at these places. So that is why I am not giving any increase in revenue guidance. But yes, in, in second quarter if we see that the market has improved because uh, to produce more goods, so to sell uh, again in the shop is not an issue. We can produce in September, October also some of the goods like uh, basically more of sweatshirts and jackets. So sweater is difficult to make uh, in a such a short notice. So uh, in that case, if we see the scenario that the uh, economy is remodulated, discretionary spending is improving, we can revise our guidance and we can come up, come back with revised guidance of growth also. But that will be only in the second quarter. Conference call. And just to give your perspective, I see uh, NBOs, Coach, we have... Can you come in the queue for the follow-up question? Okay, sure. Okay. So the next next question is from the line of Parvin Sharam from Individual Investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes you are audible. Yeah. So I have a few questions. First one is uh, that, you know, in the Q1 also we had a lot of sales return. And uh, it was, uh, the, you know, management said that these are, this is one-off and we don't expect this to happen again. And uh, in the con call of Q3, you know, as late as in February, we were expecting a decent uh, Q4. All of a sudden, last 45 days, we, expect, you know, see a tsunami of the sales return, drastic sales return. Uh, so this kind of, you know, uh, is this roller coaster kind of, uh, you know, profitability scenario is going to continue because it's very difficult for investor and analyst to project. You know, we have a good quarter and then all of a sudden in the next, we, we book the sales and next quarter there is a return. So it's very tough. Uh, so this is one of the remarks, you know, and I want to understand what happened in the last, because I've seen the results of Raymond's and other companies, the things, you know, economy was down. Uh, it was subdued, but not to the quantum of what we have performed. So I think uh, that is a one, you know, point which has to be noted. The second point is, uh, do you think that uh, it's not an issue of our brand pull or product positioning, wherein, you know, in the market, uh, the customers uh, are not ready to buy our stuff. Is that a, a gap or you expect, you know, you are seeing that it is entirely due to the economic scenario where in discretionary environment, you know, spending is not there. So people are not uh, taking our, uh, you know, garments and stuff. So this is question number one. Okay, I, I understand your point. So, you know, if you see that in last 10 years, this is uh, one of year where uh, this thing has happened. Otherwise, I think the, you might be having, uh, tracking this company from last 10 years. You must have noticed the, how many times we have failed in our guidances. So this is one year where definitely we admit that ki there has been some miscalculation as far as inventory merchandise was concerned. As we normally know, don't get data from our SIS and MBOs. We, we get uh, online uh, data from our EBOs and from our uh, LFS, but in SIS and MBO front, we could not get you know, exact data. We only get after 15 days. So that is how where we fail to uh, plug that gap. But that, again, we have taken an action in that and we are installing one app at our go store also to get the live data by from our, from our customer representative so that these things should not happen in the future and we should know that key, what is going to come back and how many uh, how, uh, how much merchandise is lying at those store also. But again, there are no excuse for the failures. Definitely, uh, whatever we have committed, we committed for the flat guidance and uh, for margins. So margins, we failed. But I think uh, there is a lesson to learn from here. And we know that from uh, which are the areas where uh, basically we got these leakages and where we got more returns and more higher discounts. So company is taking appropriate action. And I don't want to say again and again, I think the coming coming quarters, uh, rather my, myself to speak, I would ask, I, I, I would see that my results speak for ourselves. Okay. Uh, the second question is uh, on the summer sales, you know. Uh, uh, Parvin, can you uh, please uh, come in the queue for the follow-up question? Yeah. 
So just to answer uh, again, uh, one one part is that so uh, uh, he was uh, he was asking about you know whether the customer is the brand full is less or no. See, uh, this is evident from the fact that our volume has grown. So there is a no fall in the volume, even though some of the companies have degrown the volume, but our volumes have grown. But our volumes have grown, but only because of higher discount, the revenue has gone down, and because of higher returns, the sale has got impacted. Because when we have to take back the goods, we reduce that from the sale. Otherwise, the revenue was up. So the volume growth was. I just uh, uh, give you some information on the volume growth. In case of woolen, it was from 19 lakh to 21 lakh 46 thousand. In case of cotton category, it was 74 lakh to 76.6 thousand. So volume growth was there, but only because of higher discounts and uh, revenues. Uh, revenue has to be uh, reduced as returns were more. Hope that answers your questions also regarding trends. I'll, I'll come back in the future. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Dheeral from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good, good morning, sir. Thanks uh, for the opportunity. Sir, are these higher discounts are still there in the current scenario? Pardon? Can you please repeat it? Hello, audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, no, please. Uh, yes. uh, sir, these higher discounts are still there in the current scenario? Higher discount are, what are you saying? Are still there in the market? No, no, no. Uh, right now, right now it is the summer season. Uh, the winter season is already over. But yes, the summer season is also uh, the consumption is not picking up. So as far as retail sales are concerned, it is almost flat. So we, I think, uh, all the companies in India are planning for discount starting from uh, next week. So this is the latest information I get from my marketing team. So we have to follow the same. So again, sir, in Q1, we will be impacting from the higher discounts and again, margins uh, maybe on the operating side would be uh, much lower. See, I, I can't give quarter to quarter guidance. I can give you yearly guidance and yearly guidance we are sticking on the flat revenues and improving our margins. Okay. And sir, on the home textile side, what is our strategy overall? Because last year, what we have seen our home textile has not grown as compared to the other business. So overall home textile, like you were saying that we have, we have seen the improved demand. So what is the overall guidance of the home textile? So home textile, I think it is uh, one of the silver lining in all the product category, and we anticipate a growth of minimum uh, 15 to 20 percent going forward in this home furnishing segment also in this financial year. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Viraj Parikh from Carnelian Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you're audible. Uh, so, sir, this is uh, just one question. I mean, uh, you know, geographically, if you see, North, uh, North has been more or less the same uh, as on last year. And, you know, we were trying to concentrate a little bit. You know, we got some confidence on the previous earnings calls and opening some uh, uh, outlets in the West and the South and the Central region. So, I think it's fair to say that a lot of our returns have come from our core markets, which is North and the East. The first question is, uh, how are you seeing uh, the store operability in these regions in terms of opening new stores? Are you opening in the same district, or same city, or are you exploring new regions? And the second question is, uh, the weaker part of our uh, Pan-India presence, which is West, South, and Central, how are you looking at these regions where, you know, probably other brands are much stronger, or do we see that SI25, we still maintain these kind of, uh, uh, you know, basically exactly from the north and eastern region where uh, you know we have a lot of winters but and the returns from south and western market because there was no more winter so returns are less from that but uh, if you if you see the growth both the regions have grown uh, the western region just for information have grown from uh, 69 crore to 80 crore and uh, the south has grown from 48 to 43 crore 53 crore so both the regions have grown even though the north has de grown and east has de grown but there is no declining sale in the as far as South and West is concerned. So last year, I think we opened around uh, eight uh, EVOs uh, in South and uh, uh, West. Uh, and this year, again, the plan is opening 10 EVOs in South and West. So we project that the South and West will keep on growing. And even in this financial year, we have ambitious target of uh, South should be crossing around uh, 70 CR from existing 52 CR. 
and the rest should be touching around 90 cr from existing atcr and so uh, the balance of our ebs that we which will be opening in north and east so will we be concentrating the areas here existingly present or are we exploring new areas in the northern and eastern markets no no there are areas where we are not present like you know we have a map of each and every region so there are area, areas where the potential is there and we have only mbos and sas but don't have ebos but everybody now actually you know mbo business is becoming very risky as the smaller mbos are basically shutting down now because they have high expenses and when they buy outright they are not able to meet their expenses when the discounts are there from all the brands so these smaller uh, mbos which were you know thriving uh, in last uh, 10 years and 15 years they are now closing down so those are the areas where we have a potential to open our own ebo so we have shortlisted around around 50 60 places all across uh, india basically more in northern eastern and central region where we are opening these stores it's not it's not only it's not competing with our own store or sas it's only complementing in the areas where we are not present and this is just one last question from another student uh, uh, sure. i'll get back to you okay thank you sir. the next question is from the line of deep chitalia from nine trade equities please go ahead sir my first question is what is the ssg growth uh, and how much revenue came from online sales this is my first question and sir uh, my second question is uh, are these gross margins sustainable in fy25 or are we seeing any improvement going ahead yeah i'll come to the first question the sales growth is zero even uh, it was uh, minus 2 uh, minus 3 in december quarter but uh, the full year Uh, in January March, the total SLG is zero. There is no growth and no degrowth. And as far as online sales is concerned, it has improved from 91 crore to 111 crore. In this financial year, the contribution which was around 6 to 7 has gone to 9 percent of overall sales. Okay. At the margins, I have already shared that the margins will be definitely having a improvement as compared to last year's margins. But at that, uh, how much EBITDA we can make, we can let you know by second quarter phone call. Okay, sir. Uh, that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Vivek Gupta from Novus Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. This is Vivek from uh, Novus Capital. I had uh, two questions regarding the other smaller segments. uh that's the home textiles and the kids so since the segments are much smaller uh, are the margins lesser in that business and uh, given the overall business these two segments are not much comp- uh, contributing to the entire uh, volume and revenues so what is the strategy around these two segments uh, of the company yeah it is definitely have lower margin as compared to men's and women's but kids contribute approximately i think 8 to 9% to the turnover And home furnishing margins have improved this year as compared to last financial year. It has reached around I think 20% of EBITDA. It's the silver lining in as far as Monte Carlo is concerned. And in home furnishing, basically, uh, we are even seeing a, this year a decent growth of 15 to 20% also. So home furnishing contributed approximately 141 CR in last year's revenues, and kids contributed around 92 crore in last year's revenues. But the home furnishing has declined, right, uh, on an annual basis from one fifty to one forty. Yeah, it's around three percent, a four percent. Okay, and you have set up a new capacity. No, uh, no new capacity, but we are adding new ca- a few categories. Like we have added added towels, throws, bathrobes, and uh, some of other uh, smaller categories. So that is actually showing a very good uh, growth, and also there is a good demand in the market. We have recently we had a trade show at uh, Ludhiana, so we are normally we collect advance. So the advance collection is more than 15% as compared to last year. So that gives us the confidence of uh, going forward the growth on a 15 or 20 home furnishing segment. There is a data recently I had just to do that. And the kids segment, what is the strategy around that? Given the sales is also not much and margin also not much. No kids, I think again uh, there is a lot of competition in the kids. The margins are also less. We'll be sticking to. the revenue contribution at this level only okay and the sales channels for these two segments are similar to the cotton woolen or they are different so they are they are same they are same okay so they do not add on to additional costs 
No, there's the same channels which sells quarter and volumes. Okay, that was about it. Thank you. Channel is different. Oh, home furnishing, the, the, the sales channel is different. Yes, yeah, it's different. All together different. Okay, okay. That was about it. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Shikhar Mudra from Vivo Commercial Limited. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. For, for the stores, we are looking to close down. Uh, how much are they contributing in revenues? I think they are contributing around, uh, including SIS, including uh, EBOs, including LFS, should be around 20 to 25 CR. 20 to 25 CR, okay. And uh, w what are the number of stores we are looking to close down? Total, I think there are uh, four to five EBOs, then there are 30 SIS, and then again there are 40 to 50 uh, sale points in LFS. So those are already, we are taking to close it down. and. Uh, uh, we are adding around 45 to 50 EBOs. So I would, uh, so those uh, new additions would definitely compensate the sales, but we are losing from here. And and the reason to close them are the, uh, basically lower margins or uh, are they on there those. Two reasons, two reasons yeah. for that. In case of SAS, basically you know we tell them to have at least 35 percent of MRP sales, and then we have some restrictions on the returns also. So okay. both these criteria have been failed in these essays which we are, you know, uh, shutting it down. And in EBOs, uh, the rentals were more and the footfalls were less. So the expenses coming were more as compared to sales. So those were the reasons for that. Again, in large format stores, it was open in those areas uh, because it was forced by uh, some of the, uh, like Reliance and Shopper to supply goods in this area, which we have refused this year, this time, this year, uh, where the footfalls were not there. And also, we have to take a lot of returns, probably 70 percent return from those locations. They could not sell it. So that is why we have decided to take action on all these areas to save ourselves as far as profitability is concerned. All right. And, and, and which are the geographical areas in which these stores are located? Or is, is there any one particular geographical area? Or no, it's, it's, a, it's a spread across uh, and India, mostly northern and eastern region and central region. Okay, all right. And, and uh, like, how do you quantify, like, how much were these stores uh, making losses uh, on the uh, EBITDA level, or uh, how, how do you, how would you quantify the impact of these stores? We, we have desired parameters, you know. We see the rental percentage, the employee percentage, and the sale returns and discounts. So when it is more than what we, you know, have decided that this is a benchmark, so we decided to, you know, give it, like, uh, close it down. Even okay. whether it is SIS, LFS, or any other store. Because this year it has become more important as, you know, there have been a lot of impact on the profitability. So we have to take all these actions to save ourselves for the future. Okay. So just wanted to understand, you know, just uh, compared to the other stores on a company level, uh, I mean, what, what, how bad were the, the numbers of these stores, you know, compared to the average store of any other store which is performing well? No, it's not bad, but discounts were more. So that has impacted us. Actually. I know I can't say that the stores were performing bad, but because one reason is that people prefer to you know show up in discount these days, and secondly, being a very heavy quarter, most of the goods you know we had in the December 15, 20th, so it was uh, becoming you know it was evident that if we don't go for early discount, we may left out with a lot of merchandise, even though we have already left with a lot of merchandise. Otherwise, if we have not gone for early discounting, so what matlab, problem I have. So that is why the company has taken action to go for early discounting and heavy discounting to get rid of these drops. So on a company level, are we planning to hire any, you know, you know take services on strategic consulting, you know, since, uh, uh, I mean, there have been some, uh, I would say some, I mean, uh, strategic mistakes, I mean, last year, and uh, I mean, are we planning to, you know, change our strategy or uh, hire some consulting services, you know, understand the market better or, you know, to develop a better strategy? If there's a no confusion as far as understanding of market is concerned. But yes, definitely, we, you know, when you were growing at a 30 percent CAG year, definitely you want to grow 15 to 20 percent next year also. So you planned more inventory, but the season didn't support, it, uh, support it you and it didn't, didn't turn out the way you wanted. But again, now you have taken action. So you, uh, this is the only thing uh, what the company can do. 
Otherwise, when in, in 2021, we had a sale of 624 crore, and 2023, we had a sale of 1100 CR. So the momentum was built up, and the trade show happened. The strong order flow was there. So we planned more merchandise. But when the season didn't support us, what consultant will do in that case also? Merchandise is all, already there. The only thing you can do is that you can save some merchandise, you call it back just to sell it next year, and the rest we have uh, gone for the discounts. So that's the best okay. you can do in that circumstances. Okay, okay. And, and are we sure that we, we haven't lost any market share to competitors or any competitors have done better, which has led to this performance? Not at all, because the volumes have grown. I have just shared earlier also, the volumes have grown. Only, only uh, I think uh, the area where we need to look at very seriously to the planning of merchandise in these winters, that we have already short mystery the locations which we are shutting it down, and there are locations which we are sending it less and will sell more in USS. So now we have two merchandise. So in those stores where uh, USS is more, so we have some last year's goods, we'll sell that. So that will save in our margin front. So we will not sell the fresh goods, particularly in December, January, in those areas. So that we decided how we can reduce the inventory in those stores. All right, all right, all right. Thank, thank you for answering my questions and best of luck for the people. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Amit Kumar from Determined Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity, sir. Uh, I just wanted to know, uh, you know, exactly how many of the EBOs and SIS, uh, you know, are not meeting your benchmarks when you sort of plan to close this year, if you can sort of... Yeah, those, those, those numbers I can't share it right now. Those numbers I can't share it right now. So I can broadly say that this is the number which I'm closing it now. Yeah, so what is what is broadly that number? I have said 4 to 5 EBOs, 30 SIS and uh, 35 LFS course. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, SIS are part of LFS only, right? I mean, shop no, SIS is shop and shop business which we uh, do at uh, multi brand outlets. So the bigger multi-brand outlets normally have a shopping shop model where all the brands have a wall where we display our goods and sell from that you know particular store. So, so SIS is part of is, NBOs and LFS is a separate uh, thing. LFS is a large all, all, store. All, basically, which all is put together brand. about 65 to 70 uh, units locations. you will. Locations, yes. Okay, and correspondingly, how much uh, you know on a gross basis, how much of in terms of new EBOs and uh, uh, locations we are looking to add during the year? Uh, we have guided for 40 to 45 stores. But that's EBOs specifically. Yeah, pure EBOs, yes. Uh, but I'm saying that, uh, you know, from an, I mean, you know, you'll be sort of talking to other MBOs and LFS in terms of addition of locations also. Uh, would we have no, some we are not adding, uh, uh, sorry, we are not adding any LFS because of higher discounts and higher returns. Live format business is a very, very tricky business. So we are, it's completely SOR. And uh, the returns and margins are less in LFS business of all the channels we operate. Okay. And uh, in terms of SIS in uh, MBAs also, that also you're not looking to add this? No, SIS definitely, uh, there are some locations which uh, our marketing team is looking at. If we can get that place, because those are the good M uh, SIS. So we are trying to have, in, particularly in South and West, we are trying to have those stores but we can let you know only in the second quarter. All right, thank you. Thank you. That's it for my end. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Deep Chitalia from Nine Rays EQ Research. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, my follow-up question is, uh, sir, can you provide me the geographical mix from north, west, south, and east? That's question one. And sir, uh, my second question is, uh, uh, is what is the current ASP in quarter four? And how are we looking at in FP25? That's my first question. Yeah, geographical mix, you know, basically uh, almost 88 to 89% business comes from the northern, central, and east region. And rest from, comes from the western and southern region. So, uh, it is there in the uh, presentation also, uh, which we have shared. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, sir, my second question is, uh, are we looking for improvement in ASP going forward? And what is my uh, what is the current ASP uh, for this quarter? Yeah, we have we have raised our prices around 7 to 8% in this financial year in summers also. 
and also the same hike has been taken place in the winters. So my ASP should go around seven to eight percent, and it should also mitigate the effect of discounting also. So that's why the company has taken this decision. Okay, sir. Understood. Thanks. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Parvin Sharam. from an individual investor please go ahead yeah uh, hi thank you again uh, two questions first is uh, in the you know in the last one call it was mentioned that the september trade show was good and we were expecting uh, good uh, you know decent summer equipment uh, garments being shipped so has that sales being accounted uh, the summer sales which we were expecting or uh, what is the situation on that Yeah, we have grown in volumes, as I uh, said earlier, also. But the, because of winter discounting, it has affected the revenues. Otherwise, the summer volumes have grown. Okay. The next yeah. question is, sir. Uh, uh, it's more of a comment than your suggestion. Is there a possibility of uh, cost rationalisation? Because as you said that uh, consumers are preferring to go for discount sales, wait for discounts, and discounts have become norm. so i think uh, shouldn't we look at uh, discount prices being more of a norm rather than our you know mrps and things like that and aligning our business model and cost structure accordingly yeah seeing that only we have raised the price of you know 7 to 8% normally it increases 3 to 4% so to cut down the effect of discounting the prices have been raised and also some other steps have take, been taken at the traveling and marketing level also at uh, to business promotion level also to cut down the cost So that will definitely help us in improving the margin going forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Yeah. Thank you all for participating in this earning phone call. I hope we have been able to answer all the questions satisfactorily. If you have any further questions or would like to know about the company, please reach out to our higher manager, Miller Miller Advisors. or at our uh, investor monte carlo corporate.com email address thank you very much on behalf of monte carlo fashions limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now discuss